Yes, definitely. Welcome back. Third year. Third time appearing. Yes, I don't get it. I'll get it right this time. Third time's a charm, that's what they say. <laughs> Superman Returns, uh, you grew up in uh, Iowa. That is correct. Iowa! And believe not too far from where George Reeves was originally from in Wolstein. Uh, that, is, that is true. Uh, have you ever visited Wolstein? I have not, but my parents have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Many times, yeah. Okay. And uh, prior to Superman Returns, um, leading up to being cast in that role, what was uh, your experience in uh, regard to acting, you know, modeling? Uh, Before going to Los Angeles? Yes. Uh, well, I was in the, all of the musical productions that could be possible up to that point in, in Norwalk, Iowa. Uh, musical theater, theater, uh, choir, church choir, swing choir, band, marching band, jazz band, solo contests, uh, I think that covers it, yeah. Okay. Real professional experience. Right. <laughs> and what was the entire process of actually uh, first finding out about the opportunity to play Superman and going through the whole casting process? Oh, I, I would, that would take the whole entire uh, Q&A. <laughs> um, but to sum it up, I had an original meeting in March of 2003 with the director, Mick G, who was the director at the time. And it was just kind of a, a meet and greet, a half hour conversation where we didn't even talk about Superman. Uh, and then I came back and uh, read with the casting directors and then I read with, uh, and Mick G was in the room for another one and then I did a screen test along with five or so other gentlemen. And then we had to wait we had about a month of waiting until they decided what was going to happen. In that time, um, Mick G left the project and everything kind of fell apart. And then resurfaced again a couple months later um, under a different director. And um, then I still didn't get called in for that for a long time. And I was like, what's going on? Surely they saw my tape. They know I'm the guy. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't until, I believe, August 13th, uh, that I got a call to finally meet uh, uh, the director, Brian, um, at uh, Coffee Bean on Sunset, which is no longer there. And we had a two and a half hour meeting. And uh, in that meeting, it sounded pretty much like he kind of almost made up his mind already, but it was the first time I'd met with him. Um, but then I went and did the whole kind of same thing again. I read, met with everybody, and then did another screen test, uh, of which I think I was the only one then, but maybe I wasn't. Um, and uh, then another waiting game for another month or so until I was finally cast. Um, so the whole process was about six months. So <laughs> it was a lot of up and down and heartbreak and excitement and stuff, but it worked out. And I'm here. There you go. Uh, I think I've read before that uh, even at an earlier age, uh, individuals had always told you how much of a uh, your favorite Chris at, at that time when you were younger. You know, yeah, it was, well, I was only 19 was the first time that I remember anybody saying that. Uh, my first manager ever uh, mentioned that uh, maybe someday, if there's a you know TV show or movie, definitely get me in on that audition. So. Right. And working on Superman, um, the entire process, of course, having to be up on wires and flying and everything, what was that whole experience like being being hung up there. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, I mean, uh, the learning process was awesome and a little bit scary. Uh, not in a bad way, but just, you know, dropping that far at a fast rate is, is, a, is something I hadn't experienced before. Um, so, uh, but I enjoyed that learning process. It was about uh, a month and a half, two months of, of preparation uh, of, of wire work, and I worked with a great uh, movement coach, uh, this gentleman, Terry Notary, who's done amazing things, you know, since uh, working with other actors and um, and uh, just helped me move more gracefully. And um, I did trampoline work and a lot of just, uh, you know, getting in touch with 
how my body was moving physically and that kind of stuff, which allowed me to bring a, a stronger physicality and gracefulness to the character that um, was what I wanted to, to add um, to it. And then with all the flying technologies, make it look as, as good as possible. So. And after Superman Returns, uh, you then did uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. A lot of Scott Pilgrim fans here. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, experience working on that film? Well, it was great. Uh, it was a great fun. Um, Edgar Wright's an amazing director. I was very excited to be uh, to be working with him, and you know, a phenomenal cast, a fantastic story, and and, and, uh, and to be a part of. I got to play. Uh, I don't typically like bad guys. Uh, playing bad guys, but when it's goofy and silly and over the top like that, it was, uh, I loved it. Uh, anytime I can be over the top and it's, it's to make people laugh, I enjoy it. So <laughs> I enjoyed it very much, yeah. It was a great time. And, and, and you know, the film uh, has grown uh, over the years and, and, and really created a great um, audience and, you know, so much so that we got to do the Netflix series that came out uh, uh, late last year and uh, it's been a great, great time. And then another film that you did shortly after that was uh, Dylan Dolph. Yeah. Dylan Dolph, friends. Thanks. Nice. Hey. And that one, uh, you actually reun reunited with Sam. That's right, yeah. That was Jimmy and uh, Returns, uh, uh, working on that project. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, that film as well. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We also reunited with Gil Adler. Uh, Gil, who was unfortunately not able to be here with us today because he COVID and he's all the way in Vancouver, so it was very far from the travel. So hopefully we'll make that work another, <laughs> another year. Um, so Gil uh, produced and and, uh, and Sam and I uh, starred in it. It was a lot of fun. Anytime I can work with Sam and anytime I can work with Gil, it's it's uh, it's an amazing experience. Um, and you know I get to be funny in that sometimes in that movie. So I don't really like I don't like uh, the horror genre that much, but I like horror comedy. So that was right up my alley and monsters. So I can remember uh, the first appearance that you had here in Metropolis, I believe, back in 2011. Uh, you and Sam were actually here together, and I remember um, how much uh, y'all kind of were cutting up, playing off each other. Was it kind of uh, like that on the set, also like a lot of practical jokes or anything like that going on? Yeah, well, not practical jokes, but 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 jokesters. You know, always trying to a little bit one up and just you know make a joke and make a joke and then go to work and then make more jokes and then go to work. <laughs> to uh, the CW with the uh, the crossover episode, you got to return to the character of Superman. Yes. And, and my uh, second return, <laughs> my first return was prophetic. <laughs> and uh, pretty much a Kingdom Come version of the character. Mm -hmm. So preparing for that different take on the character, what, what was that whole experience like? Uh, pretty easy in a way. I mean, the hardest part was, you know, getting in shape again uh, for it. Um, but thankfully I was in I was, in, I was in definitely in better shape uh, to do it that time than I was the first time. Um, and had a great trainer up in Vancouver where we filmed it. And, um, and I also knew a lot more things about health and nutrition, so it was e much easier. Um, and as far as the character differences, it's still the same character uh, from Superman Returns. He's just had these epic, uh, terrible emotional experiences in his life of loss. And... Um, I have lived nearly 20 years at that point of life since I made Superman. I guess it was 15 years, um, and had a son who's here with us today, Leo. And uh, Leo. So, Leo. Leo. And um, that really uh, imparted a lot of uh, uh, more, 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 more depth and presence, I think, and authenticity for the character because I had just lived more life and I felt. Even though I'm, I'm not wise enough yet, I was wiser than I was at the beginning, uh, the first time. So, uh, and, and had loss in my own way that I could uh, tap into more to, to bring a more, more gravitas, a more groundedness to, to Clark and Superman that we see in, in the crossover. And over the years with uh, Henry Cavill, of course, coming in for uh, the reboot, and then uh, next year we have uh, David, David Cornsweet. I think I'm pronouncing that very quick. Um, do you still follow everything that's going on since your take on the character with the newer movies and what's coming up next year? Uh, I mean, I, I'm aware of what's happening for sure, and um, I'm a very 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to what James, uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran do with the DC world because uh, I know one thing, if I know one thing, is that James uh, really loves uh, this material and he'll honor it and appreciate it. I don't know if he'll look the way and be the thing, the version of the thing that we, that, every, that some people want it to be. I don't know that. I just know from watching Guardians of the Galaxy, um, the heart and the soul and the family that he's created uh, in those movies, I think is astounding and something really important and needed in the world where we can have these, um, these, these different people, different walks of life and different uh, upbringings coming together and creating a family, um, even in such chaos. Um, I think it's what we have to do in the world today. So he's giving us a model for that in an epic cinematic universe. And if he can do that and, and make us laugh and make, make me cry in the movie, uh, especially Guardians 3 so many times, then I know he's going to honor, honor you know, the spirit and soul of Superman. So that's all, that's all I need to hear. And if he doesn't, well then, I'm going to have to write him a strongly worded letter. But. <laughs> I definitely want to uh, open up uh, questions here to the audience. Uh, have uh, Supergirl right over here with the microphone. Just raise your hand. She'll come to you. Ivan has a question over here. Ivan. I think it's the same temperature it was the last time I was here. <laughs> Feels the same. Yeah, Leo, give me a question. While we, we, until we get that. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Question asked before: Do I like better Superman, the Adam, or Todd Ingram? Um, and then the answer is, is, is Superman. However, uh, Todd is uh, excuse me, Todd, you're fine, but no, go away. Um, <laughs> Ray, Ray Palmer is, is is near and dear to my heart, and I love playing that character. Oh, the whole universe, that whole universe was fantastic. But Superman is Superman, so you can't you can't ever beat Superman. Uh, in my heart, so. Good question. What's your favorite way to have fun? What's your favorite way to have fun? What's my favorite way to have fun? That's a great question, Ivan. My favorite way to have fun is to laugh. <laughs> uh, anything that, uh, so, uh, movies make me laugh, good conversations with friends, and new people um, make that happen. Fun experiences. I think experiencing life joyfully is 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 what I love to do. It's hard. It's challenging to find ways to do that these days, but they do exist. And I'm, I I work to be here to help us find other ways to to all of us to do that because there's so much more to life um, than just to have fun and joy and love. And I love you, Ivan. Thank you. First, I want to say thank you for being here. My pleasure. And I was going to ask, with the Atom, you were the first person to play it. Besides Superman, where you had multiple, was it more intimidating being the first person to be this character? Absolutely. Or easier? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, I mean, more intimidating to play Superman, yes. Less intimidating to be the Atom. Uh, and more like exciting. Uh, that was one of the exciting things about the opportunity. It was to, to bring Ray and the Adam to life. Um, and I had a lot of choice kind of in, in how I got to, to, do, to do that within the confines uh, of, of the, uh, the awesome writing and producing and directing. But um, yeah, uh, I, got to, I got to bring my own, my own energy to it. And, and to be honest, I, just to go back and qualify something about Superman, this, uh, listen, there's not much, I don't think I would have done anything different anyway. Like Chris, Chris nailed it, and I don't know how I would have, even if I had never seen the, his, his films, 
I think I would have, I feel like I would have approached it the same way, but he's my model for Superman, so um, that wasn't hard necessarily either. It was just daunting to make sure that I lived up to that, the, the, my own expectation and everyone else's. When you uh, first were auditioning for the role of Superman and the, the different tests and everything, uh, was there ever a time that you wore the original costume during any of those? They didn't do that at all. So the, the costume, the only one you wore is what the, we saw on the, the screen. Yeah, uh, the only actual costume I was in was for the first screen test, and it was a Stan Winston designed like foam suit, all one piece that you had to pull up, and it was, there was only one of them. So all the different like six guys who were auditioning, I think we're all trying to get in the same suit. I mean, it didn't really. It didn't really fit me. It barely fit me, and there were there was at least one guy that was taller than I was, so I don't know how that worked out. But the other for for, for the other my second screen test, it was a uh, it was a it was a it was a blue shirt, and a, and a, and, a, and a, just a sheet basically. The entire thing. <laughs> There's a, a video of it somewhere. But hi, uh, it's really cool to meet you. My first comic I ever read was Kingdom Come, so it was really cool to see you in that suit. And my question is, which suit was more comfortable to wear? Your Superman Returns shirt or your Kingdom Come suit? Uh, the Kingdom Come suit uh, was definitely much much more uh, comfortable to wear. And the technology of the suit design has come a long way. Uh, there have been so many superheroes and superhero movies since Superman Returns, so, you know, uh, I got the benefit of that the second time around. Um, and also, I mean, I think it was also a beautiful suit as well. I got to be more involved in the design to a degree. I mean, I didn't just, it felt, I was more included, uh, which was uh, awesome also. Hi, Radon. Nice to meet you. Um, this is a question about the sequel of Superman Returns that never was. Robert Mayer Brunet in a podcast, the, the guy who made the yeah. awesome yeah. Uh, documentary, Wrecking yeah. for Krypton. He told uh, that he read a treatment about the new Krypton, Brainiac, Shason growing up. You know something about this? Uh, I you? never, you know more than, I mean, I, I okay. never read a treatment. Um, I had heard things as something. Uh, what do you heard? It was a it was about terrorist plot type of situation. Um, and that's kind of all I know. I, it might have been, I might have heard that Brainiac was going to be involved, but that's all that ever filtered back to me. Everything had fallen apart so, so far. Um, so quickly that, you know, I'm sure he, he probably knows. He's probably is pretty close to that truth. Hi, Brandon. I came from Spain only to see you. Oh, this wow. is a, it was a long travel, but yeah. it's worth. Um, I know your Superman is coming returns and in uh, Kingdom Come in, in crisis. Is the same Superman in different uh, stages of his life, but which version did you enjoy the most to play? Which version, uh, Superman Returns or in the, or the Kingdom Come version? Yeah. Um, well, I enjoyed the Superman Returns storyline better. Um, I mean, it's kind of a catch twenty two because I I would uh, like to have played Superman Returns with the wisdom and the life experience that I had that I had when I was. 38 <laughs> versus when I was, wait, no, I was 40. When I was 40, I turned 40, yeah, on the set, uh, 40 versus when I was 25. Um, and I think the Kingdom Come storyline is, is is very, very, very interesting and like a cool storyline. That's a very heavy storyline and I, I don't like, you know, like so much sadness, uh, but it's important, it's an important story. Um, I, I mean, I would want to blend into the two someday, you know, because I want Superman to be joyful. Superman is a beacon of hope and light, and uh, you know, while that's in Superman Returns, I think the sequel would have given us more, even more of that. Um, but we had to create the backstory and the whole, you know, Superman and Lois weren't together, so they're not like they're not happy. Uh, there's not a lot of charming Superman except for with Kitty Kowalski. So that's one of my favorite scenes is taking her to the hospital. Um, so, I would like I would like uh, uh, an even more joyful version of Superman, where there's still like drama and getting the bad guys or whatever it is, but um, more hope, more laughs, more Clark, more fun, and also the drama and action. Didn't really answer your question. But then, uh,
and thanks for traveling, for safe travels home. Uh, hi, Brandon. I know that you originally wanted to be a writer, and we're all kind of glad that that didn't work out. Because you're, you're a great singer. It didn't work out? No. I'm not, I mean, you know. Yeah, no, I'm not, yeah. When you went to, when you went to UI. But I was just, I was just curious about that. Uh, who within, what were some of your favorite authors that inspired you to want to do that? Uh, well, when I was uh, a youth, uh, and still today, I just don't have time for it, I love reading uh, fantasy. So I started with, actually it was Patricia C. Reed, I think was in middle school, dra t Talking to Dragons or something serious, but then um, uh, Terry Brooks was the first real big one um, in all of his series, and then uh, Terry Goodkind, and then Robert Jordan, and uh, David Farland also has an interesting series. And then I, I kind of, since this is, I haven't read much since uh, 98, 99, since I came out here really, uh, or came out to Los Angeles and started the, the acting biz. But I wanted to be a fantasy, you know, fantasy novelist. Um, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any stories about working? Maybe I'll write a book with my son someday. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. We might. We have we have ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got good. We got good ideas. Okay. Thank you. He's right. No, he's right. I mean, you know, there's there's still hope. Any any stories with Jack Larson or Noel Neal who played the original? Oh, there. You wait. Any hand. stories about Jack Larson and Noel Neal? Noelle Neal, absolutely lovely every time I saw her. What a lovely presence in honoring Lois and just so sweet um, and, and welcoming to the whole family, uh, Superman family. She was, she was one of the, she was probably the best person uh, that did that and held you know, everyone together as being one of, or the, you know, the OG, as it were. Um, and for Jack, to have a great time with Jack, Sam and I had a great time in the bar shooting that scene. Um, just, uh, just uh, you know, t speaking to him about some of his his memories uh, working, and uh, just lovely to have both of them in the movie, and to to honor Superman and still get to keep them in in the lore of Superman because they've been um, so incredibly important to to Superman and the story. Uh, hi, Brandon. Uh, so. I just wanted to say, like, with your time playing the Adam and all the different like Arrowverse shows, what was your favorite one of those shows to be on? And like, while you were playing the Adam, from like the Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another legend. Um, aside from that, I, I mean, I really enjoyed working on Flash because I, I always loved working with the other show, other than Legends, would have been Flash because uh, working with Grant and and Candace and Tom uh, and all the lovely people. Um, uh, over there. Carlos. Hi, Brandon. Uh, so you've been my favorite actor since I was 18 years old. Um, I have to Thank ask, you. you have played so many comic book characters. Is there, a, if any difference at all, a different way in how you approach playing a character that is instantly recognizable, like Superman, versus someone who's more niche, like Dylan Dog or Ray Palmer? Well, I mean, Superman stands out above everyone. Uh, the, so, mm, I, I, I hear your question. I don't know exactly how to answer that or to say that, yes, there's a difference. Can I tell you what the difference is? I don't know. It's just that Superman is Superman and everybody else is, is not Superman. However, <laughs> I mean, but, but, but here's the thing, so now I'm finally finding the answer. Having played Superman first, and going on a deep dive about, you know, imagining what it's like to be the most powerful being on, on Earth or in existence, how do you do that? Um, I, I, I see that, you know, there's, there's, there's a little Superman in, in everyone, right? So what level of... Of Superman is this character? I haven't thought about it in this way, but it's uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of that. Uh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a longer question I would love to answer sometime, but I will go into too much philosophy for everyone here. Are there any uh, Marvel characters you'd have an interest in ever playing? I, don't, I mean, you tell me. I don't know every, every all the characters. They all have played wonderfully, so I don't know who else is left to play. Captain America, I've said Captain America is a great Captain America, but that's the equivalent of Superman, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could be, you know, alternate Captain America versus Chris, that'd be fun. Not versus, but in tandem. Hulk? Did you say? Red Hulk. Red Hulk? Red Hook? Red Hulk. Red Hulk. Red Hulk. That's who, what does Red Hulk do? Does he hug people when he's in there? Huh? He's just red? I'd be the hugging superhero. And you've uh, met some of the other actors who have played Superman over the years. Um, when you've had an experience, you know, discuss like the different aspects of each version that you portray. I mean, not too much. We don't get together and talk uh, talk shop too much because <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird, I guess, probably. Um, well, like, no, it's more like more like just talk. We talk about what it means to the fans, because we, we, we meet up at a lot of conventions, so it's it's us just appreciating and sharing fan experiences, encounters, and, and honoring, you know, um, the spirit of Superman, which brought us all, all of us together to be to be there, to, 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 to share that back with, with everyone here, and just kind of be like a conduit of that, the fantastic spirit of, uh, of Superman. And on the uh, TV series Chuck, obviously another great role that you played on there. You Chuck fans. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about our experience working on that, that TV series? Sure, yeah, Chuck was, uh, Chuck was great. I uh, was a fan of the, the, the show before uh, being on it. Um, I wasn't a fan of being the bad guy, but I was happy to be on the show, and uh, I wasn't a fan of all the bad things I had to do, and I was like, guys, people are gonna hate me. Um, but they do, but they hate Daniel Shaw, and they hate to love him, so it's okay, I guess, in the end. But. Um, I was definitely a little uh, resistant uh, what I had to do in that in that show a lot, but I had a great time working with Zach and Yvonne and uh, and Adam and everybody. So. Hi. Hello. Um, I was at the Superman Museum yesterday, and I was in the area where there was of this old Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. There was a device that they used for the flying sequences that had Mr. Reeve held up to have him fly. Did you, when they did the flying sequences with you, did they have you do the same thing, or was it computer animation? The good, great question. What was your name, sir? Clark. Clark. Oh, yeah, Clark. Oh, this is Clark. Oh. That sounds familiar. Um, do you mean a body pan? It was like, yeah, the big arm white, and then he was attached to this thing that was moving around, like that? Yeah, thank goodness, no. They, they thought they were gonna do that, and I did the body cast for that, which was the, the hardest part of playing Superman was the body casts that I had to do. Like two full body casts. Casts, and they put, Anyway, I'm not gonna go through that. It was terrible, and now they have computers that do all those things. Um, you know, the flying part was the hardest part of the movie, for sure, the months and months and months of that. Um, uh, but I'm glad that we did it the way we did it, all wires, and, and, and uh, or, but not a body pan, because you're strapped into that thing, and they just, uh, terrible. So I, my, my heart always goes out, has gone out to Chris uh, for him uh, being a part of that process. Recently, some rumors swirled about some sort of TV follow-up to Superman Returns. Uh, so, can you hear me okay? No, I just, I mean, it's a follow-up on what? Uh, the rumors have recently swirled about some sort of TV follow-up to Superman Returns. Uh, you know, I don't, say what you can about that or whatever you would know, but really, my question would be, if you had that opportunity, would you want to play it as 
kind of like where he was left off with the Kingdom Come storyline in the crossover? Or would you want to kind of do that with a clean slate? Well, it's a good question. It's hard to erase what happened a little bit, having had a uh, crisis. Um, but I, I really don't like that Lois died. Um, I think that's an in, in, uh, integral part of Superman's story. So for that reason, I wouldn't like it to be the case. Um, because I want to have, well, you know, if I'm in a place Superman again, I want to have a moment in the sun with, with Lois, you know, the right way. But, um, it would definitely, no matter, I mean, I, no matter what version of Superman I would ever, if, if and when, I must play the reprise, uh, it will not veer very far at all from what I've already done because there's no other Superman to me. There's no other way to be the character. It's just more of that. <laughs> That's the only answer I have that is, you can satisfy right now. Thanks. I've got a lot of different things, but I'm going to cut it short. Can you hold the mic a little closer? There you go. I just landed a screenwriter, Netflix, about six months ago. A, 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 a gig? Yeah. And, Congratulations. Uh, it's going to be called The Magnet. And uh, I'm a local guy. I live in Dexter, Missouri. But I admire you, man, because it's not easy to pursue anything towards movies. Or they want to put a life story movie about my life. And, uh, I just want to ask you, uh, this hurry and wait game, it's, it's not easy to go through. Hurry and wait. And when I'm saying hurry and wait, hurry and you, wait, yeah, you yeah. get excited, then you kind of have to wait. You get excited, but, but this is where I'm at in my life. And I'm, if I never get no farther, Brandon, I'm going to have a, a story about my life. And at the end of this month, and I feel honored, and it's an honor to be here. That's meet amazing. You. Well, uh, thank you. And congratulations. And, and, and it is a. Thank you for honoring the, the process that is, you know, creation of, of film and television. And most everything is, life is about hurry up and wait a lot of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, that the only gem I can pull from that is you gotta have something to be, it's great to have something to be excited about in the future, but we also have to be able to find something to be, a space to be in in the meantime, and that's challenging for everyone. Um, even when you're at the top, I imagine there are people who are feeling that way. Um, yeah, so life is about the journey, right? <laughs> that's why we have a life. We're so interesting that people are telling a story about it. So, um, yeah, anyway, all that stuff, that's awesome. I don't have to wrap up this end of that question. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. So for the past 10 years, my mom and I watched your Hallmark Christmas movies, and Lilac oh, yeah. and Christmas was my Thank favorite you. Christmas movie. She had passed sadly in 2021, and the sequel came out a couple years, a couple months after. So I was wondering, how did that come about? How did Hallmark decide that your movie was going to be, you know, the sequel to any other Hallmark Christmas movie? The sequel to any other? Like the sequel? How did you, like how, how yeah. did you know that? Like what was it like getting the uh, phone call for Nine Lives of Christmas, like for Nine Kings of Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I was, ex I, you know, I was excited to re-team with Kim, Kimberly uh, Sustad, who's fantastic, and was my co-star in that movie, um, uh, Merrily. Um, and I was like, you know, if, if she's in, then I'm in. Um, so it was great. I love that. I, I love uh, how much that movie has, has, has meant to people. Um, and how often they watch it, and it fills them with, you know, love and Christmas spirit, and, and that's fantastic. So, uh, I was excited to reteam and and be a part of it, having known already how much people appreciate the first one. It made the second one, you know, a little bit more special in that way because I knew we weren't just making a, a movie; we were making a movie that I knew people were going to watch and enjoy. So, yeah. Is there a possibility of a part three? That you I mean, I, there's always a possibility of things, but I have nothing in the works right now. I would like to work with Kim again, so that's that is that is that is quite likely. Um, what, I don't know what form it would be. In. Hi, Brandon. It's nice to meet you again. Um, in the Crisis episode, what was it like shooting the scene where Lex sort of dwarfs Superman, and then you have to fight Tyler's Superman? What was shooting that scene? 
What was shooting that scene like? Yeah. Uh, I don't like being the mean Superman. <laughs> Shocker. Uh, so it was challenging to find uh, emotionally the right space to like have that anger and uh, volatility um, when there wasn't a lot of, you know, I just was turned evil by Lex. There's not really a storyline for that. So finding some kind of truth in that was challenging. But I like how it, it turned, turned out and, and Tyler's awesome. He's a fantastic uh, Superman and Clark. And uh, it was great to share the scene with him and just do, do all that stuff and be on camera with another Superman it was pretty wild. And another Clark. Um, and then all the flying stuff was, was actually fun. Uh, which is not something I could say in the first go around, but we did everything in that movie, or excuse me, in that TV, in that, that whole sequence. I think in one day, I did, which was just astounding. It was like 10 hours of wire work because they created this whole new rig and way of doing it. So uh, it was fun and, and cool to work in Thailand. Hello, Bart. My question is kind of like a follow up to that. I want to say that. In my opinion, that was the best scene I ever saw. You had the best line. That was the second time I fought myself. Which the whole scene you saw from Superman 2, and then you carried on with Superman 3. Yeah. My question yeah, is... Yeah, that was cool. My question is, is, is there a possibility where you can play Superman again in another TV series, now that Superman Lois has been canceled? Is there a possibility that I can't, or I can? Can. I mean, I, 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 anything's possible. I mean, after I played Superman the, the, the first time, <laughs> impossible, but possible. And then the second time, it seems almost even more impossible than the first time. And it happened. So, the world is full of possibilities. Legally, there's nothing we're stopping it that I know of. Okay. I don't, I might need to write to somebody bigger than the CW, but. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you. You might get a call from uh, James. That goes, that he knows, he knows where I am. There you go. <laughs> but I mean, in, in prior he, movies, he's he's aware. Right? He's aware. In prior movies, they've you know gotten people to have cancer. You've had Aries Volensky was in Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, anything's possible. Okay. Thanks for coming back again. Um, there's a scene in Superman Returns that I always found to be a little peculiar. Okay. And go was, for it. And I was wondering if you or any of the production crew had any discussions about whether it should be done. Which scene? It's I think scene I know what it is. Where Superman is hovering outside of Lois's Sure, sure. Kind of yeah, ripe. Right. Ripe right for criticism. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it? What happened? How do you feel about it? Why do you think it's creepy or, or creepy more stinging? Or uh, I, I just thought it was kind of peculiar and I, didn't, I was wondering if anybody had any reactions to doing it. You know, I've thought about that because people brought it up, I don't know, after the movie. And I was like, did I miss this? Like, where was I that I didn't see this? And I, I took it, I never had a problem with it. Um, because he's been gone. He left. And... He doesn't stay and watch them go into the bedroom. That would be creepy. <laughs> he watches a tender family moment and learns a great deal of information that the audience needs to know. So from the storyline perspective, helpful. And it's an absolutely wonderful scene. One of the best scenes and well-acted scenes of the movie by James Marsden and Kate. But, but every time James, every time I see that thing where he asks the question, like, are you still in love with Superman? And her response, and his face, Man, fantastic. That's why he's still working so much right now, because he's a great actor. Um, so I, I actually kind of really like that scene. And I, uh, I, listen, Superman's not God. Uh, so, you know, I, I, technically, that is illegal uh, for him to be doing that. But, I mean, if you just think about it, he could kind of do it from anywhere. If, if he can hear people in space, he could pick you out anyway and look through your walls. So that's maybe why I didn't bump on it, because like I, I could do that anytime. He was just choosing it to do it then, specifically, to learn about a person that 
he was in love with. So that's how I feel about it. Hey, Brandon, over here, right here. Ah, there you are. Hey, man, how you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Uh, you were my first uh, Superman movie experience. I want to say that was great. Uh, well, I love that Kingdom Come through. That was just perfection to me. I can't take that much credit for it. Love your team. Thank you. Uh, uh, my question was, uh, well, now I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> when you got... I hate this watching this scene when you get beat up by the thug, like Luthor thugs. Yeah. I can't watch that scene. But uh, what was behind the scenes with that scene? <laughs> that was one of the hardest days of uh, the shoot, but also the most rewarding. So aside from getting falling down the stairs, which was my amazing stunt double, Mike Massa, you know, Lex punches him, and getting thrown into the shards, picked up and thrown by Ian. Um, pretty much did everything else in that scene. So that's me getting dragged through the water. That's me getting stuffed in the water and, you know, hit with a foam rock. Um, and Ian, uh, Ian Tom, Ian Tom, I can't remember his last name, the, the, the big, biggest guy, pulling me around and just like, I don't know, we did that six or seven times. And the water was cold also. Um, but that was epic, and I didn't have to do a lot of acting. It was mostly surviving, just like trying to stay strong as Superman while all this is happening, getting, you know, affected by kryptonite. Um, so it was rough. So it's appropriate to feel like maybe he was at risk for his life, because maybe, just a little bit, it felt like that for me. Um, but, yeah, so that's that. I, I, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but also that's good, I guess, because we did our job. Thank you. Really before that the entire opening of the movie was a little bit different as to where the whole reason that you went to Krypton was because it was a fake news story that Lex created, so you would not be there for his trial. So that entire sequence of where you were in the ship with the silver costume was cut from the theatrical release. Was that kind of a disappointment that that was not included when it was actually released in theaters? Well, I mean, yeah, I think so, because you don't see as me, me as Superman then for a very long time. But it's also, it might have been startling because it's the first time that you see me as Superman. And that's something that, that everybody considered, I think, too, at the studio level. It's like nobody had seen anybody else in a Superman suit in the movie except for Chris. So to see me right away, this new guy uh, there, I think was part of the consideration. It's on the DVD, I seen one of the DVD releases, I think the full thing, but um, I thought it was a cool part of the story. Um, maybe they could have kept a, like little pieces of it and done like a retelling of it and use it that way. Um, but I'm okay with it. I've never watched the movie with it the other way, so I'm not sure of the experience is. It would have been a much longer movie. It was already a long movie, so that's also part of the thing to consider. I have another question uh, about, you mentioned the fantasy books uh, when you were younger. What, uh, like obviously we love Superman, so for you, what would be the equivalent path that you would want to, like growing up, you would want to drive a travel? Dark Crystal. Okay. Um, Labyrinth. Uh, you're talking about movies? Just anything. Just anything that's just really in love. Jim, I think Jim Henson. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, um, uh, what is it? Flight of the Navigator? Oh. One of my favorites. How about uh, Dark Crystal? That's what I said. Yeah, Dark, Dark Crystal. Crystal. That was the first, thing, the first one I said. Um, uh, never ending story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So stuff like that. Yeah, that's dark stuff. I mean, that's all very dark. It was the '80s, uh, but but yeah, that that otherworldly stuff where still the uh, you know the good guys make it. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to Metropolis. Thank you. Um, when the movie was coming out, Superman Returns, and you were being asked. Uh, a lot of questions about 
the blessing and the burden of being cast as Superman. Thank you for saying it that way. <laughs> That's how you responded to it, I remember. And I thought that was pretty it interesting. Did. Those are my words? Those were your words. Oh, I knew something then, okay. So you learned something today, right, yeah. Um, moving forward, now that you play one of the most important roles in your life as a dad, how do you explain to your son <laughs> Or when did he first discover that his dad was Superman? And how do you share that? And if you don't feel comfortable asking, well, thanks for being here. You're thank awesome. You. Thank you. I think the most. It's a very good question. I think the most important part about playing Superman or being in anyone who is in a role that is heroic is being able to um, be okay not being the hero all the time, especially as a parent. We can't always be the perfect parent, and that's really challenging. They're clapping for yourselves, not for me. Everybody clap for themselves. And I don't need all that. It's for everyone because we're all going through this together in, in, this, in the world that we're living in. Um, it's hard to admit mistakes. It's hard to not look like you know the answers. It's hard not to be able to fix things. And it's hard when you say the wrong thing to explain what you meant to say, but you were too busy and caught up in your head that you couldn't give the time that you wanted to to say the thing that you should have said that you wanted to say. Um, and that's everybody's experience to a degree. So uh, I think what I, to go back to your original part of your question, the, the blessing and the burden of Superman, it's the same thing with life. It's like we have this greatness. We have all this potentiality and possibility within all of us. Because everybody's Superman or Superwoman, Superperson. We all have this. I'm not special. I look like the guy. That helped. I, I sound like him. There are certain qualities, obviously, that have allowed me to be up here speaking to you guys and other people. But anyone can be here in my position. It's always been how I feel about Superman. That's the beauty of Superman and humanity. And, uh, but, we, but, but you can't just like dream of being the savior without understanding... Um, mistakes that you've made along the way and giving respect back to those you've hurt and honoring people's pain. I think that's the biggest thing about parenting and about life is honoring other people's pain. Even if you didn't mean to hurt them, it's understanding that even if your intentions were not to hurt a person, if they're crying and they're upset, guess what? Something happened. So even if you didn't mean to, you can hurt a person. And it's up to you the individual becoming the bigger person to go, oh crap, or insert other word. I'm, I'm so sorry that happened. I, I'm so sorry, no, no I'm so sorry. Um, uh, oh, I'm not gonna give you the language right now because I'm failing. But there are many books on it anyway. <laughs> to, to honor the other person and understand that, they, they, that you hurt them, even if you didn't mean to. So that's what I try working on as a parent and as a person. And uh, yeah, so love to everyone. You know, love you, love you. Love you. We got out of time for one more question right over here. I got a statement in your question. Uh, when Superman Returns came out, you got to think about the timing. Uh, a lot of and I talked to another guy that was actually in line right in front of me to meet you. A little closer with the mic if you can. Uh, another guy that was in line with in front of me to meet you earlier. We were in Iraq. Yes. So that was, you know, a little brightness for us. You know what I mean? So the people who say it's, the movie was no good can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I'm with you. My, my question is, I, I grew up on the, I was born, I think, the year that Superman 1 came out with Christopher Reeves. So that's who I, that, that, and I told you this earlier, and then uh, you kind of fed off of that one. And I think, uh, 
name a second ago. Uh, Lois and Clark, or Superman and Lois, they kind of fed off you or them. But how do you feel about the demeanor of the other Superman? They had a different uh, persona to them. Like, uh, I'm, you mean the, that have come after me? Yes. Yeah. Like they didn't. Where they were, you were. Where you were smiling and happy and funny. Yeah. They were not. Well, I, listen. People love the, that that movie and 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 uh, the portrayal of Superman in that way. Many people wanted and and needed that. Um, so the world has had both versions. Um, I have always preferred Chris's version, my version, the original version, which yeah. is. Um, a beacon of hope and light. I think that's what we need. Um, and I think there's a way to show the pain that was in subsequent movies. A lot of pain. A lot of like trying to ground, grounding it in reality. And uh, so I, like, I honor that. It goes to what I was just kind of speaking. There is pain. How can you have this guy flying around and treat him like he's like something special? It's not even real. He can't fly. And you know, deny the real world pain that people are destroying each other. Daily, daily, for years, forever. Um, and right now, as we're sitting here, that's a lot to handle, everybody, isn't it? I'm taking it real, real here. Um, but yeah, how do we hold that? As you, I, it's a question I always have in my life, constantly, every day. How do I get up every day, come here and be with you lovely people, when all that stuff is going on in other places? Truth is, I can't do anything about what's happening over there. Uh, in a real effective way, I can just do this and be here with you guys. This is this is my contribution. You are contributing by being here and being in the spirit and the joy and love of Superman, uh, uh, and, and 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 spreading that joy and love to your friends and family and everyone else. Superman is about light. And the light doesn't deny anybody, okay? Everybody needs light, no matter where you are, who you love, what color you are, any of that, all the blah, blah, blah. It's all people, it's all love. So if I have one message, I listen to the question you even asked me. And I'm on the, I'm up on my, I'm on the stage. So I'm saying it again. Because I've been super, I've been playing this guy for a long time, and this is the message that always comes back to me about this, after all the love I received from thousands and millions of fans. Uh, I am so honored to be sitting in this position, standing here, sitting here, being here, supported by all of the artists and creators and everyone has come before me. And uh, I get to like give that love back to you guys. That's one reason I'm here, um, so that, that everybody else can go do it. So that's like a big contribution we can have to help all the other stuff that's going on in the world that we don't have direct control over. So when I see a movie or media where Superman isn't portrayed in that way, I, that's not my favorite. There's a way to do that and have Superman go through trials and tribulations and still have a bright side. You know, Superman Turks narrowly did that at the end. Um, and so, so that's how I feel about that. But there's another part of that question that you talked about, about the soldiers, and, and I want to honor that, and I appreciate it. Thank you for your service, and everyone here who's served, no matter where you served, or in the military, in armed services, here at home, everywhere. I uh, appreciate you so much, and I, and I honor how much Superman has meant as, as, a, as, as the hero of all heroes to all the other heroes. Um, I've heard so many stories from, from veterans who've come over in a personal way sitting kind of crying with a few people and just letting them share with me that the movie, the fact that this movie, they credit Superman in the movie with helping save their lives. And that's a lot. Um, but I'm so grateful that they told me that because I also then understand after thinking about it, like, it's not me. I, I'm a conduit. I'm here to share the message, everybody. And that's what I'm here and I, and I appreciate you and love you all. And I'm grateful that you all are here and have one request before we wrap up. You can clap it out if you want to. But I, I didn't want to be rushed off the stage. Thank you for your question, Ponder. Are we done? Okay, I have a request. It's my parents, um, today, is my parents, Ron and Katie Ralph, 
It's their 50th anniversary. And they, I'm gonna say it on the camera. Today, oh, I'm telling everybody, hey mom, dad. Um, they're in Kansas uh, City at a friend's, uh, my sister's childhood friend's wedding, where they're getting celebrated, but that was planned before I knew I was gonna be here, so then can we all uh, say, uh, uh, Thank you, 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 thank you,